Hey guys and welcome back. So today I'm back with my January favourites video. It's going to be a little bit different this month because there's basically no makeup in it. I haven't been wearing a huge amount of makeup day to day or any makeup day to day. Um, I've been actually, it's kind of 50-50 because I've actually been testing quite a lot of new products but nothing enough to like be in a favourites just yet. There's a lot of things that are kind of like I'm testing out behind the scenes that you'll hear about soon um but day to day i really haven't been wearing that much makeup my skin has been super super dry for the past few months so a lot of the products in this video are focused on hydration um and i feel like this time of year a lot of you guys probably have a similar kind of issue and your skin's quite dry my hands have been super dry as well so i'm going to talk you through a few of my favorite products starting off with skincare um a new moisturizer um i've just got oh and I just dropped the lid, there we go. Um, I've just got one skincare item this month which has made it into my favourites and it's the SVR C20 Biotic Cream. This is a brand that I discovered last year and I spoke about a few of their products um, in favourites last year as well. I really like their cleansing balm too. This is a vitamin C cream. I really like using a vitamin C in my routine in some form, but most of the time I end up using serums because I feel like vitamin C is actually, it's one of those ingredients that's quite difficult, or apparently, obviously I haven't formulated any product with vitamin C in it, but it's apparently quite difficult to stabilise, so it ends up being put into a lot of the time the textures are quite silicone-y or quite oily um, and I find it quite hard to find like the right vitamin C product that I really like. This is amazing because it's in a really thick cream um, and apparently it is stabilised and like works really well. I have loved using this, I've been using it for about three weeks. The only thing I would say is the packaging is a really rubbish design because it's one of those, like obviously the hole in the top is not the same size as the actual um, pot, so once you've used up all the product in the middle, which I'm getting like fairly close to, like I've hit the bottom in the middle bit, um, you will then have to like dig it out from around the edge, which means you get all the product up your fingernail and all that, which is kind of annoying, but I mean, it looks nice, it looks nice. Um, I really love this, the texture is really rich, it's super hydrating, so if you do have dry skin, it's really, it feels really nourishing and really hydrating, um, but it's not too heavy that you can't use it in the day, um, which I like to use vitamin C in the morning and then use a night cream at night, so I've been using this in the morning, really like it, it's also got vitamin E, so really hydrating. Um, so I feel like it's just like a richer alternative to a lot of the vitamin C kind of serums out there. Um, last year I was a big fan of the Ulla Henriksen one, one and also the Origins one I really liked as well. Um, the, you know what, another good, really good vitamin C product that was out last year, the Pixie vitamin C range is also really good and I liked their Caviar um, Balm. Um, that was really nice too, but this is just like a richer, more kind of um, hydrating feeling vitamin C option. Really big fan of that and I love the brand as well because they are that kind of, um, it's like a French pharmacy brand I believe. I don't, to be honest I don't really know much about it in terms of um, the history or anything like that um, but it's a really good price point in between that super high end or affordable. So I think this cream is like one of their more expensive items, it's about £40 but their cleansers are around 15 20 so they're like in that nice spot of like luxury but not super super expensive um next up more hydration hand cream i have a bit of a love hate relationship with hand cream because i hate having oily hands like it's one of my like it, you know like nails down a chalkboard type feeling for me it's oily fingertips if i get oil on my fingertips i don't mind like my the back of my hands um probably even my palm it's just fingertips i hate it so i don't love hand cream i'm not one of those people that uses hand cream all the time but obviously the past year i've been washing my hands a lot more using hand sanitizer and my hands have been getting drier and also this time of year as well like i said before my the last two months my skin has just been so dry in general my face my hands my body so i've been kind of like using hand cream or reaching for hand cream when I wouldn't normally. This one however I discovered about three weeks ago and I've already used up like half the pot. It's super super rich but it is so effective. It's from Orly which is a nail varnish brand um, and it's the Argan Oil Hand Cream. It smells kind of funny like it's got like a citrus scent. It, it, like I don't love the scent I have to say but the actual product itself is so good if you have dry hands it literally not only makes them instantly look and feel a lot better um but also like a few days of using this and I, I was getting like really dry knuckles also really really good for your nails if you have like dry cracked nails which I have always suffered from my nails are like 
they've always been really kind of like dry and flaky. Um, I think it's a hereditary thing to be honest because my mum has it and my grandma has it as well. Um, but yeah, so it's really, re I've just found it really, really good for hydrating my hands. It's like, it's expensive for a hand cream, I feel like it's about £15, depending on where you get it from. I think you can, ha you can get it a bit cheaper, but a little bit goes a long way, it's super, super rich and it is just really good really really good and then another kind of similar product that is it's not a hand cream but it's like vet, like a rich moisturizing product is the Aveeno active naturals baby this is like the longest name ever Aveeno baby dermexer good night emollient balm um so essentially this is like a hydrating balm and i started off using this on river because river gets quite dry um like legs sounds weird because usually like if you get dry anywhere it's gonna be like your elbows or your knees or whatever and she actually gets like really dry calves so i was putting this on river and actually it's so good if you do get dry um knees or dry elbows anything like that it's really really good also really good on your hands as well if you um are looking for a more um easily accessible or affordable alternative to using something like the hand cream that i just mentioned this is really good because it's kind of one of those all-purpose balm type products um really good for hydration and aveeno also really good for sensitive skin as well um lip hydration <laughs> i told you this video was going to be all about hydration um new lip balm from indeed which i got sent a few weeks ago and it is so so good this is a brand that i loved their eye cream years ago i haven't actually used it in ages i might buy another one and, and use it again because i absolutely loved it the isolix eye cream um and i've used a couple of their other products before and really like them they're a really good um like mid-range skincare brand they've just launched their hydroluron lip treatment they have a tinted one as well um but this is just the clear one it's so good so hydrating it has a really like the moment i put this on i was like yes it has a really like thick texture but it's just really plumping and just absolutely divine it is if you've got dry lips this is super super good um and if you don't know or you have used the hydroluron um serum in the past i think they have a cream as well they have like a, a range of it it's basically like hyaluronic acid based um skincare range really really good and then another lip product that i have been absolutely loving and i've had this since i think i got this mid-december and i posted about it on my stories because i got sent it without there's having any information in it and i didn't realize it was actually not released yet and under embargo charlotte tilbury products always like she likes to launch them so i was like posted it on my stories and then got a very swift message be like take it down take it down you're not supposed to talk about it yet i was like okay um so i think this came out at christmas and then i've been using it ever since basically like it's just it's if you want something that's like a lip balm that's slightly tinted i spoke about the original version of this so you can see what it looks like. It's like your lips for better type hydrating lip oil. I spoke about the original version of this last year and absolutely loved it. The, just the clear lip oil. And this one is, I think there's two shades actually. This is the Rose Lust one, which is just really pretty. I've just been reaching for this loads. It's like not an exciting product, but it's one that I use like every single day. Another thing, this is, li this is actually finished pretty much. I think there's like a couple of sprays left in it. Um, I got sent a set of Orbe products at Christmas which was massively exciting because I love this brand you guys will know if you follow me for a while I talk about Orbe like or I have done on and off a lot it's like the ultimate luxury hair care brand they're super expensive this product I'd seen it before and I I guess like didn't I don't know, it wasn't really like my thing. Um, it's Mystify Restyling Spray. More recently, I've actually been trying to style my hair with no heat, use less heat on my hair, not blow dry my hair, which I actually haven't done today. I blow dried it and straightened it today because this is the only period of time that I have to film this video because Mike's got river this morning and I didn't really want to film with wet hair. So, um, but I have been using a lot less heat on my hair. So like day to day, I would just let my hair air dry. I actually did an, uh, a reels on my Instagram last week, basically like doing it. So you can see what, if you want to go and have a look at it and you haven't seen that already, you can see what my hair looks like naturally with the texture. And I've been doing that a lot and trying to use less heat on my hair. I feel like now is... A good time to do it because we're not really like going anywhere doing anything with my hair i feel like it's like a good time to actually reduce the heat that i'm using on my hair and try and get it into better condition because i got into such a bad habit of straightening it all the time straightening it or curling it all the time with as well as blow drying it and also more specifically because my hair is quite resilient actually like because i've always done that but more specifically straightening these front bits which 
I've got into like a really bad cycle with because after I had River, which is really, really common, like postpartum, you lose a bit of hair here and then you get regrowth, like tufty regrowth and I'll be able to show you. But I've ended up in a really negative, like this, I've ended up in a really negative cycle with these bits in my hair because when they grow back, they're kind of curly, they like to stick out. What do I do? Straighten them, which makes them break, makes them damaged and then I've just permanently have short bits of hair instead of actually regrowing it. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, anyway, back to this product, <laughs> long winded intro to this product. So this product is designed to actually, like you can use it after you've styled your hair as like a second day styling product and you spray it into your hair and it is supposed to reactivate your style and your styling products that you've previously used. I don't really use it for that. Like I said, I've been using like, like basically using this on second day, non heat styled hair um, and most of the time that also means I haven't really used like, I'm not using like hairspray or texture spray I'm using like leave-in conditioner and oils and stuff to keep it from being frizzy but what this does which is actually amazing is it kind of it's really odd because for me it's like it basically like wets your hair but it also has hold so you know if you have like textured hair or a little bit of waves and you wet it it looks or like a little not like dripping wet but just like a little bit damp you wet it and the texture comes back but then it dries and goes frizzy what this does is it wets it the texture comes back and then it holds it and it is so good if you are wanting like beachy waves or anything like that brilliant it sounds ridiculous because it's a super expensive product but i actually use this on river as well river's hair is really curly she has gorgeous curls and for that reason i don't like to brush it too much or um i, I, I don't blow dry it obviously but like she washes her hair at night we wash her hair she hates washing her hair, but she washes her hair at night and then often will go to bed with it uh, still a bit damp and therefore in the morning it will be crazy and then obviously have to brush through it she also like rolls around a lot and it gets knotty so anyway, long story short, couple of sprays after I've brushed it and it just, it goes back to that beautiful curls instead of being like frazzled out. So um, really, really rate this. And I've been using it loads. Obviously I've used up the whole thing since Christmas. And this isn't like a, a deluxe sample. It's like, this is a 50 mil. So they actually sell these. I think they're about 20 pounds to buy the small ones, which is, I mean, like I said, all base crazy expensive, but super good. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about that now because it's like, 15 years later. Um, another thing that again was a Christmas present, but this one was a rediscovery, Erin Amber Musk. Um, the brand sent me this as a Christmas present um, just before Christmas. Oh my God, it smells so good. I had loved this years ago. I can't even remember, it's probably about five or six years ago. I bought it originally and I don't, I actually think I might still have a little bit left in my bottle in my drawer, but it's gone off now. So I've stopped using it. And they sent me this again, and I basically have fallen in love with the scent all over again. It's like a hug in a scent. It's so warm, so delicious. Um, it's like, it, I don't know how to describe it in the sense of it's like, it, it's almost a little bit gourmand in the sense that it's it, slightly vanilla -y and just warming and it's, such a lovely winter scent but equally i wouldn't actually limit it to the seasons because it is it's just really nice really really nice it kind of reminds me of ode well which is my favorite diptyque scent um which is basically like a spiced vanilla it's just very comforting yeah i really like this i fall in love with it all over again um I'm a big fan. I find the Erin fragrance is a little bit hit and miss though because a lot of them are quite floral. The other one, I've got another one from her that's the Amber, oh, I can't remember, I'll put it down below anyway. It's basically the newer one, like the intense Amber one and that is also delicious. But this is just, it's really nostalgic for me as well. It has really nice memories. Anyway, moving on to more entertainment based favorites this year, this year, this month, feels like a year, doesn't it? Um, I, my New Year's resolution this year was basically to read more and to get back into fitness. Nothing, no, like no like major like goals or like specific things that I wanted to hit, but I wanted to start reading more. I loved reading when I was younger. When I was a kid, I used to read all the time and I used to fire through books. Like in the summer holidays, I would read like a, a book every couple of days when I was a teenager. I loved it. And as I've gotten older, I've read less and less. And then since I've become a mum, I basically just don't make the time to read and I, like I don't ever like saying I don't have the time to do something because I think if you prioritize something strongly enough you will do it um so like even if it's 10 minutes of reading before bed or it's the same thing with the gym it's like you prioritize the time that you have in the day and if like reading is like 
up there in your priorities, you will do it. So I was like, I'm gonna prioritize reading this year, even if it is, like I said, 10 minutes before bed. Um, and I hit it hard early on, so I read, I finished pretty, well, I've got like one chapter left of one of these, but I finished two, and I've got two others on the go. I'm like, I'm, I like flitting around a bit with my books, but basically I wanted to talk about my favorite books I've read. So the first one is Untamed, ah, uh, by Glennon Doyle. I feel like everybody is reading this right now. This is the weirdest thing, because this book was something that I didn't hear about for the whole of, like last year it came out i think in march last year right before everything with covid kicked off which is the weirdest timing because reading it like in the context of covid is it's just like the stuff that she writes about in it you're like it's like you knew this was going to happen because everybody needed this book last year and this year what was weird about this book is that i didn't hear anything about it until mid-december and then i started hearing about it like every single freaking day like and it would pop up in the weirdest places so like you know when like someone's talking about it and then the next day someone else is talking about it you're like this is so weird i didn't know who this woman was until yesterday and now everyone seems to be talking about her anyway it's kind of like part memoir part self-help if you haven't heard about it already go and look it up i don't want to talk about it too much because i know a lot of you will have read this already but it is really really brilliant and i feel like if you are in not a great place this January is probably a good time to read this book. It's, yeah, it's really good and really positive and just, yeah, it's a good life book and I, I, I definitely would recommend it. It also comes really highly recommended if you're a parent. I feel like you will relate to this a lot. You don't necessarily, like, obviously you don't have to be a parent to read it, but like, there's, you definitely get something from it if you're not a parent as well, but I feel like she talks a lot about parenting in this book as well and it's a lot of things I relate to. And yeah, she's just great, yeah. And I now follow her on social media as well. I think she's amazing. The other book that I've actually finished um, so far in January is The Memory Wood by Sam Lloyd. And this is a thriller. I really enjoy books like this. I really love like true crime, murder, all of those kind of like murder documentaries, things like that. Um, I've spoken about my love for my favorite murder podcast before. So I feel like if you're in that kind of camp, you will like this. It's about child abduction, kind of a dark topic. If you're not into that kind of stuff, probably not for you. But I really enjoyed it. It's got some good twists and turns in it. An easy read. Like, it's not gonna set the world on fire, but it was an entertaining, easy read. I enjoyed that. And then lastly, A Discovery of Witches. I have just started reading this. And last night, I started it again. I actually, like I was saying, I. <sighs> This is kind of like a, another long-winded explanation. I worked with Sky yesterday on my Instagram for the TV show of this. If you guys don't remember or if you haven't seen the first season, I spoke about it when it came out two years ago. I freaking loved it. It was amazing. And then it disappeared for two years and I kind of forgot about it. Um, it's recently come back with season two of the TV show, which is another favorite. Oh my God, it's so good. And I know a lot of you will have seen it already, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but it is amazing. If you're looking for something to watch in lockdown, and you're like, you've exhausted all avenues, go and watch Discovery of Witches, season one and two, it's brilliant. Um, also, controversial opinion, I did not like Bridgerton. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, what? But yeah, if, you're, if you didn't like Bridgerton as well and you're looking for something more fantasy related to watch, a Discovery of Witches is amazing. But anyway, I've had this book for a long, long time. I, I, would, est I would guesstimate maybe eight years, like I, close to when it first came out. Um, and way, way before the TV show. But I can't remember if I ever finished it, genuinely, because I've seen the TV show now, I know what happens, and I'm like, do I know that from the book? I can't remember. And the book doesn't, like, this book to me doesn't look like it's been read, but people remember, I mentioned it in my on my Instagram yesterday, people remember me recommending the book, and I'm like, but I don't remember finishing it, so did I recommend it as, or did I talk about it when I bought it? I don't know, I can't remember. If anyone remembers, please let me know. Um, either way, I started reading this again, and I am, I'm like a few chapters in because I fell asleep. I'm like this far in. It's so good. The TV show is so good, but I'm just, I cannot wait to literally devour this. And there are three books in this series. Then there's another book. Apparently there's a fifth book. I'm confused. There's a lot of books. There's, this is a trilogy, but then there's like an extra one. So there's four. Um, and I think there's like a companion one. But basically it's like embarking on, you know, Harry Potter or Twilight again. I feel like that. I'm at the start of something epic and I cannot wait. Um, 
I'm, I'm only like 10 years late on the bandwagon with this but I feel like I was on the bandwagon maybe I just fell off um who knows this book I'm trying to like work out it doesn't look like it's been read but it looks like you know when books get old and they start to like the pages kind of look a bit uneven like they might fall out um it's starting to look a bit like that anyway that's my other favorite the other thing I've been watching and I would be interested to know your guys opinion if you've seen this is it's kind of a love-hate thing and I feel kind of embarrassed for saying that it's a favorite but Mike and I this weekend binge watched and finished um fate a wink saga or the wink saga which again fantasy related it's like total teen angst like it's like a a, a fairy boarding school let's just put it that way like it's 50% terrible, 50% amazing. Like, I can't quite decide where I where I stand on it. But we really enjoyed watching it. Like, total, like, not good TV. Unlike A Discovery Witch, which is actually amazing. It's like, it kind of, like, filled the hole for that, if that makes sense. Anyway, that's the other thing I've been watching. Not quite a favourite, but almost. We enjoyed it. Um, that's it for my January favourites. I feel like this is the waffliest video ever i've probably ever made i haven't filmed in such a long time i feel like i'm just like blah, 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 blah. um i hope you're all really well sending you all lots of love and um i'll see you again soon bye guys